Uh, I am I am stoked that you're here because I think what you did was awesome. But I'm curious to learn about the details. So I heard about this shadow document. Apparently, you and several others cut some kind of deal or finally got McCarthy to cave in and give you guys something. Then we heard there's going to be a, a floor vote to abolish the IRS. Just 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 tell us what's going on, because, you know, we're getting it all secondhand. Uh, look, we believed that Washington was broken. The normal system of selecting leadership in both parties is based on the redistribution of lobbyists and special interest money. Like if you want to be the leader of your party, you basically have to raise and redistribute north of $100 million. And Kevin McCarthy was so good at that, he raised and distributed about half a billion dollars over the course of the last election cycle. And so it creates a covenant that's not really built on trust or merit or vision, but trading money for political support. And we wanted to send a shock to that DC cartel system and to say, no, guess what? There's gonna have to be a different way you get there. And uh, the concessions we sought principally fell into like three buckets. Policy, we wanted specific bills coming to the floor. We wanted commitments on when they would come to the floor. We wanted uh, adherence to specific spending levels with a budget resolution. And the organizing principle of our policy goals was really to make sure that we would never again get an omnibus bill like we had to vote on. There's just a total joke of a way of governing. Like, how can we sit here and honestly say that bills that are thousands of pages long, that spend $1.7 trillion, and that you get 48 hours before having to cast a vote is really legislating? It's not. It devalues each individual member, and it's insulting to our constituents to suggest that we even know what the hell we're doing when that's the way we, we run the railroad. So we had policy concessions. Second was procedure you know, having those 72 hours to read the bill, having open amendments. Like it's, it, <laughs> the youngest member of Congress was not yet born the last time the appropri appropriations process went through regular order. And that just means like, we should vote on the defense stuff separately and then vote on like the education stuff and then the health and human services stuff. And that it doesn't just all get mushed together so somebody can vote for a bunch of bullshit that you wouldn't otherwise approve and then say, well, I had to vote for it to fund our troops, right? That's the game. That's what the cartel builds and lobbyists make a gazillion dollars off of that. The final leg of the stool is personnel. Like in order to enforce the deal that we got, we wanted specific people on specific committees in specific leadership posts. And you know, what, what's the saying? You, you rob the banks because that's where the money's at. Well, we wanted far more representation on the Appropriations Committee because that's where the money is. And a lot of Americans don't know what the Rules Committee is or why that's important, but it totally governs what we get to vote on and what we don't get to vote on. And so we demanded specific people and specific representation on the Rules Committee. I think we're going to be in a lot stronger position as a result. Like the critique, I, I heard a few critiques during this process. One is like, this was chaos. You showed the country, you know, how, how rough and tumble this is. And, you know, you should have done this behind closed doors. To hell with that, man. Behind closed doors is where the American people have been getting screwed. And so I wanted to level my complaint on the House floor specifically. I wanted to cite the people that I was objecting to and their ascension to leadership. And uh, so I didn't that didn't mind. And then, like, it's like, oh, no, this took this. You burned your whole first week. There are days in Congress where the only thing we vote on is the renaming of one post office. <laughs> there are days in Congress where the only thing we vote on are the rules that govern the next vote. And we take six weeks off every year for summer vacation where we do absolutely nothing. So to take four days to say, this is the policy, this is the procedure, this is the personnel that is gonna drive the Republican team going forward seems like the best use of time since I've been there. So that was the, the general construct.